Hey guys, I'm Nate, welcome back to the workshop. Having a fireplace in your house can be really great, but if you don't have one, getting one installed can cost thousands of dollars. In our last video, we showed you how to build the body of this fireplace, and today we're going to be finishing it up so it looks like it's made of authentic brick and wood. To make the bricks, we're going to be using these sheets of craft foam, and to make the mantelpiece look like it's made of real wood, we'll be using this wood-grained contact paper. Most of the outside of the fireplace is going to be covered in the bricks made from these foam sheets, so let's get slicing. Each of these foam sheets is 12 inches wide and 18 inches long, so let's cut it into 18 bricks that are 6 inches long and 2 inches wide. There you go, you can see we get quite a few bricks out of one sheet, which is good because we have a lot of fireplace to cover. There you have it, we've now cut up eight of those sheets of foam into bricks, so it's time to start applying them to our fireplace. Update, you can now see that we have covered the whole front of our fireplace in our foam bricks. For the most part, it's pretty basic. We started just by putting this arch over the curved part of the opening of the fireplace, and then everything else kind of got built around that. We have a little bit of a staggered pattern of the whole bricks and the partial bricks on the sides. For the partial bricks, I just lined up approximately where the next brick should be and cut it off with a pair of scissors. I did the same thing with these small, weirdly shaped pieces where they intersect with the curves or angled bits on the archway. You can see I've got these pieces here and here that I had to sort of custom shape, it's pretty easy to do. You lay it down, draw about where it should be cut with a pen, cut it out. If it fits, great. If it doesn't, cut more. If you cut it too much, get a new one. Now with the front of our fireplace bricked up, I'm going to move on to the sides and do the same thing there. One thing to note is these small pieces of foam that are acting as the ends of bricks, I'm going to try and line those up with full length bricks on the side so that it looks like the edge of a brick actually set into a fireplace. There we have it, we've now bricked up the front and the sides of our fireplace, and I have to say, I think it's looking pretty good. So the next step is to paint it. We did use the red and brown sort of brickish colors for the foam, but we are going to cover almost all of that color. So you could really use whatever colors of foam that you want. Now this foam has a very open and porous surface on it, which means that it doesn't always take paint very well at first. It will sort of drink in the color, and you'll lose a lot of what you try to apply to it. So before we add any paint to it, we're going to take a heat gun and go over this whole thing. The heat will actually make the cells on the foam sort of close up and it will give a smoother, shiny texture, which will take our paint a lot better. I also want to point out that I ended up with a lot of leftover bricks. In fact, I have over two whole sheets worth of these bricks, and I used eight to make this, which means you could probably get away just fine with only using six. As you can probably see, it doesn't take a lot of time on any one piece of foam. You can keep moving fairly quickly. The foam is now fairly sealed and should take paint pretty well. There may be some people out there very familiar with this craft foam who might suggest a few other steps using EVA glue and some Plasti Dip to get a really nice sealed coating on this foam, but for our purposes, just the heat gun should be enough. The last step we're going to take before we add paint is I'm going to use the hot glue gun to fill in a few of the gaps where the edges of the bricks meet. There we go, our bricks are attached, they're sealed, and we've got the gaps filled. So now let's go over it with some paint. And the first kind of paint I'm going to use is this stone textured spray paint. It's really going to help give our bricks a much more realistic texture. This stone textured spray paint is a little more expensive than most spray paint. It costs about 10 bucks at Walmart. We've added a stone texture spray to the bricks and I really like how it's looking, but this stuff can take a few hours to dry, so now we need to let it sit until it's safe to handle. 
While the textured paint is drying, let's make our mantelpiece look like it's actually made out of wood. We've got this wood grain contact paper, which is kind of like a roll of tape that's 18 inches wide and 20 feet long. I'm using this color of wood grain because it was available at Home Depot for about 15 bucks. If you look online, there are probably a lot of other colors or patterns if you prefer that. What we want to do is measure a piece that's long enough to cover our whole mantle, cut that off, then peel off the backing on the sticker paper, and then attach it over the whole thing at once. I've got a little bit of a wrinkled edge here, so I'm first just going to trim that off so I have a nice straight edge. There we go. I want it to be long enough to reach all the way across the mantle, down the edge, and then overlap just about an inch or so on the bottom. So I'm going to give myself some extra. I've got about four inches here. I probably only need two and a half or so inches, but I'm going to give myself margin of error. Same thing on this side, a little snip to measure that. And then the back of the contact paper has grid lines all over it, so it's easy to follow, making sure you're getting a nice straight line. If you're looking for where to buy this stuff, it's usually called shelf liner. It's designed to put on the inside of shelves to make them look like they're a little more fancy and less just plain particle board or something. Now what we need to do is peel off the backing to this strip of contact paper without getting it all wrinkled up. Remember, this is basically a giant piece of tape at this point. So I just have to make sure it doesn't stick to itself and get too wrinkled. Now we're gonna want this attached to our board to try and make it go on nice and evenly. We can't just flip it upside down and press it on. That does seem like it'd be the easiest way, but I've tried that and it never goes on really nice and smooth. So we do have to do something a little more careful than that. So to start, let's take our mantelpiece and fit it. I'm not gonna put it right in the center. I am gonna put it a little farther toward the back because the back doesn't really need to be perfectly lined. Our fireplace is going to be sitting up against a wall. If that doesn't have quite enough coverage or anything like that, it won't be a big problem. So overlapping just by about an inch and trying to keep it nice and straight so that our contact paper will go over it straight, I'm going to attach this down onto the paper. You can see that it's sticking to it. Like I said, it's basically tape. So now what we're going to try and do is lift it up and start laying it down over the top of our mantle, one bit at a time. Ah, you can now see what it's supposed to look like. We now have our contact paper stretched out all the way across our mantle. As you can see, like I said there would be, there are some bubbles and some slight wrinkles, but we can actually get most of those out just by carefully pressing them down. If we're able to push the bubble to an edge, then all of the air can easily escape and we can usually get rid of it entirely. If you have any bubbles that are in the middle of your board and you just can't get rid of them completely, the air is probably stuck and can't escape. What we need to do is take a sharp razor blade or a pin and poke a very small hole in part of the bubble. This should allow all of the air to escape and your bubble to disappear. There we go, our contact paper is now nicely secured to the top of our mantle. Let's trim off the excess and attach it to the sides. You can see here's one edge. I want it to reach down to the bottom of the mantle and then maybe about an inch on the bottom to wrap around. So let's cut off our extra about here. We'll want the contact paper to wrap around the front of our mantle and the side, but this corner piece is just gonna get in our way. So let's try and cut that out. We're gonna cut lines into our contact paper lined up with the front edge and the side edge of the mantle. Now let's pull our wrap fairly tight over the edge and wrap it down over the bottom of the mantle. We can see that even though I trimmed the sheet, there's a little bit of overlap onto the front. That's all right, that will help prevent there being any gap in between the front and the side. So I'm just going to put a little slit right here so that these will fold down evenly and then they'll get covered by our front sheet. Now just to take out a few more wrinkles and spots where it's not quite even, I'm going to lightly go over the contact paper with the low heat setting on the heat gun. With the wood print attached to our mantle, we're now ready to move back to the body of our fireplace and finish with the paint job. I'm going with this sort of darker red. The color on the can is colonial red, and I think it makes a really good sort of faded brick look. I've got three colors of paint I'm gonna be using. The red that I already pointed out is going to be my primary brick color. I have a little bit of this caramel color that I'm gonna be using on the inside of the fireplace 
to give it that sort of fire brick look. And then I've got black, which I'm gonna lay down everywhere that should be pretty covered with soot on the inside of the fireplace. There we go, our fireplace is now looking a lovely brick shade of red. However, real bricks are very rarely one smooth, uniform color. So to make it look a little more realistic, let's take a few different colors of acrylic paint, some crumpled up paper, and sort of sponge paint that on all over to give it a more mottled look. Using just a little bit of acrylic paint and a paintbrush, I added mortar into all of the gaps between the bricks, and that really makes it pop, I think. Now the bricks look like bricks instead of just like a red textured wall. So I love doing that part. We've only got one step left before we permanently attach our mantle on top and finish our fireplace. That's to take our black spray paint and go over and just add a little bit of built up soot onto our fireplace. Beautiful. Be beautiful. Love adding weathering to stuff. Mmm. Suddenly looks so good. Like it looks good before, and then you add weathering and you're like, BAM! It's perfect. Now all we need to do is attach our mantle and our fireplace will be complete. To attach this, we're gonna use the hot glue gun again. And to start, I'm just gonna put two little points of glue on the very back. That will hold it in place so that when I put the bead down on the front, I know it's not gonna shift forward, backward, or sideways at all. There you go, mantelpiece attached. You can see, you can lift the whole fireplace up by the mantle. I mean, it only weighs, like this whole thing is probably like six pounds, maybe? I don't know, it's very lightweight for a whole fireplace, of course. Yeah, mantle's attached, looks like wood, the bricks look like brick. It's fantastic, this thing makes such a cool decorative piece. But to finish it off, there's one more thing it needs, and that's a fire in the fireplace. Of course, we don't want a real fire. This thing's made of foam. It will melt and burn and fall apart and smell terrible. We can't have that. So we have a good substitute. There we go. A nice log fire to go in our fireplace. This is a neat little artificial log fireplace setup that is actually also a heater. It puts out real heat so you can have a fireplace with a fire and heat all coming from one spot. It's pretty cool. Now to make this work, there is a cord that comes off of our fire and we need to be able to get that to an outlet. So let's cut just a small hole in the bottom of the back of our fireplace so the cord has a place to get out. Beautiful. Oh, that is so great. Now it's like a real functional fireplace. You've got the nice warm glow. You've got the look of the flames in the background. You've got the warmth coming off of it. Everything you could need from a fireplace. There you have it. Now you're all prepared to relax by your own homemade fireplace. If it happens to be near Christmas time, your homemade fireplace can be the perfect spot to hang some stockings. If that was a real fire, you would really not want that stocking to hang that low. But that's all right. This isn't gonna catch your stockings on fire. There you have it, how to build your very own brick fireplace. It's way lower cost and takes a lot less time than putting in a real one. There are of course some limitations like no real fire in your fireplace and there's a limit to how much weight you can put on top of it, but it really does a good job of looking like a fireplace. I love having one of these things. Thanks for joining us for this video and remember to come gear yourself up with products and merch at thekingofrandom.com. See you there. You can cut right through bricks with a razor blade, it's amazing. If it hit you in your face, it wouldn't even hurt.